Hey everybody, what up Fish Tank TV? Uh, Shane on a Monday. Hey, um, Tony G on our chat, and a lot of you guys know him, uh, it's the, the beta guy. Uh, he uh, wanted me to do a video about my cichlid tank, my Malawi tank, and kind of how you start one, what you have to do, um, kind of fish you can put in it, and, and what the parameters are. Um, so I guess I'll start with the, with the tank setup. And, and cichlids, Malawi like cichlids at least for the most part. Um, Africans want high pH and a lot of hardness. So a lot of people use crushed coral um, as a buffer. And, and if you guys know anything about crushed coral substrate, it's uh, not that expensive, but it's used in salt water a lot as a, as a chemical buffer to keep your pH up. My water comes out of the spigot perfect for uh, Malawi cichlids, so I don't have to do that, so I use play sand. And then any type of rock work is usually good. Um, for Malawi tanks, you're going to overstock your tank, so you're going to put way more than you normally would in a tank. For instance, my 55 gallon, at, by the time I'm done here, will have around 18 Malawi cichlids and, and peacocks and a couple three or four Cynodonus catfish where these things, the Cynos can get six, seven inches and the uh, cichlids themselves are anywhere between four and seven. So um, 20, 20, uh, around 20 fish, four to six, seven inches uh, in this tank will get pretty crowded, but there's a reason for this. And the reason is, is because African cichlids are all semi-aggressive. So what you do is instead of putting two in a tank like this where the weaker one's gonna die, you put 20 or, or 15 and uh, what happens is it spreads the aggression out so instead of one dominant fish killing off another fish it spreads its aggression out between you know 14 15 other fish so um, that's the reason why they overstock Malawi tanks and the rock work is, is because they all need territory and they need hiding places and the weaker fish need places to go and um, all Malawi cichlids and, and the rift lakes are extremely rocky bottoms where they stay. There's two main different kind of Malawi cichlids that a lot of people, there's actually three or four, but there's two main ones. Uh, one is Mabuna or Buna as they say in Africa. Um, those are the smaller uh, not necessarily smaller, but some of the more bottom dwellers like the Johani, the Digs, uh, the Kenyas, the ACIs right here. These guys, most of the fish in this tank, honestly, are, are uh, Mabunas. And what they do is they, they can get a little bit more aggressive depending on the type of Mabuna that you have, but um, they like to stay towards the bottom and kind of chill. And uh, a lot of their diet, they're omnivorous, and, and a lot of their diet's actually algae. So you'll see a lot of the Buna species are are uh, omnivores, but they uh, they definitely focus a lot on algae growth. You, you'll see them eating a little bit of algae here and there. So, uh, and then the peacocks, which are these guys, are more free swimming, and they're actually more of a protein diet, more carnivores. So, um, peacocks and mabunas are the two that you're really going to look for. Some of the mabunas you can get for four bucks at Petco, sometimes less, and then some of the peacocks can get over a hundred bucks, full, fully grown males. Um, my German red, those are usually around 60. Uh, the, the OB peacock I got young, but it's normally, I'd say 15 to 20. And then f by request, I have a uh, electric blue in here acclimating right now, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, but um, he's, he's also a, a $40, $40 fish. So uh, like I said, there's a lot of different food varieties you wanna research your fish when you get them, but um, I get a good cichlid staple. So you're thinking, uh, Hakari is a good cichlid staple pellet. New Life Spectrum, I love this stuff. Um, it's a cichlid formula, just like I use the small stuff for the small fish. But And then they supplement algae, so you want to throw a half of an algae wafer in there, break it up and throw it down there, and they, they grub out on it. And then for the, I have Cynodonus cats, which are West African species. Um, some shrimp pellets. So, like I said, you were overstocking the tank, but that means a couple things too. Is it means that you also have to overfilter the tank. And you have to be a little bit more aggressive on your water change regimen. So I have about 600 gallons per hour, actually about 700 gallons per hour going in this tank on a 55 gallon, which is quite a lot. Um, but it's a lot of turnover. 
so it can deal with the amount of ammonia and the amount of nitrite and all that stuff that's going through the tank. So that being said, overstocking your tank, your nitrates are going to go up pretty quickly. And those of you who know what I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my nitrogen cycle or cycling your uh, fish tank video. Um, your nitrates are going to go up quick, so you're going to want to be aggressive with your water changes. So I'd say somewhere right now around the 50% a week is good. Once I get my last four f fish in here, three or four fish in here, um, and the fish start to grow a little bit, we're gonna probably be doing uh, closer to 75% a week, two times a week, about 40, 50% each. So um, that being said, I, I told you I was getting a few more fish and I have one today. When you're adding new fish in a, in a cichlid tank, you wanna be careful. Um, you don't wanna put one fish, one tiny brand new fish in by itself when these fish haven't ate all day because they're gonna rip that thing apart. Every fish in the tank is gunning for the new guy. So what I do is, before I feed these guys, I'll reach in here and I'll move some of these rocks up on top down to the bottom and I'll shift some of these rocks and knock a rock over and move some sand back into a place where they had dug it out. Um, like the Johanny in my digging video is digging under here and the, the Sinnoh's dug under here. I'll move everything different. And the reason why is that it resets the environment. It'll say, hey, um, all the fish will be, instead of defending their territory, they'll be looking for new territory and claiming their territory. So when I put my electric blue in, it won't be as bad. Right after I move on the rocks, I'll feed them. And as I'm feeding them and they're all eating, I'll put my electric blue in on this side. He'll run down and get to the rocks and he'll be fine. Um, after a couple, after, tomorrow, I'll move all the rocks back to the way I like it. But it just resets the environment so that it gives your fish the best chance to live. Generally, another way you do it is you add no less than two fish at a time. So most of the time, the peacocks are obviously expensive, but for all the other ones, I would go to the store with 40 bucks and I'd buy four or five fish at a time and I'd add them all at once. That way, it, the, you're spreading the aggression between five fish rather than just one, if, if you guys can see what I'm saying here. So high ph a good buffer crushed coral is good if your ph isn't high in your spout water uh high water hardness the water has a lot of dissolved solids in malawi they actually have cichlid salt from uh sea that you can buy also um the foods get a good cichlid pellet and then supplement with some kind of vegetation and then some brine shrimp or blood worms uh the tank set up you want a lot of rocks uh, definitely for sure overstock to keep the aggression down over filter and do heavy water changes because your nitrates are going to jump up when you add fish try to do it two at a time and create a diversion and reset your environment in your tank with a lot of aggressive fish you can do this also uh, one last thing for all of you planted tank gurus probably not a good idea um, there's a few plants that work with malawis one is anubius uh, it's a hardy plant that that is is uh hard for them to eat and then java fern is okay they're going to nibble at it but it tastes bad for the fish so um any questions on this guys let me know for sure um keep in mind also one little small note is that you never want to keep two males of the same species together so if you're smart you're going to want to get one of each type of species and you stay pretty safe and honestly your tank looks better i have two acis because one's a male one female uh, and two yellow labs, both of them are female. So you kind of, you can kind of do it how you want, but uh, for the most part, if you get one of a bunch of species, your tank's gonna look good off anyway. So uh, stick with that. Make sure all of your fish are about the same size. The only exception to that is, if you wanna get peacocks, try to get them as when they are bigger than the fish you have in your tank, because they're the least aggressive of the Malawi species, so you want them to be bigger so that the smaller, more aggressive Buna species don't mess with them. All right, so keep it real, good flow, good filtration, fishtanktv.com. Um, hit me up on chat. We're always there, guys. Thanks, appreciate it. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe.